Hello, hello, listeners. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Uh, that was a little piece of music by The Bottle Tops. Thank you for letting me use your tune, guys. You can check out The Bottle Tops at www.bottletopsmusic.com. Welcome to the show. My name is Jimmy Putnam, host of the Jimmy Curve. With me, as always, are my co-hosts, Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. And Will Doherty. Hail Baphomet. Hail Baphomet. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for downloading. Hopefully we'll have some t-shirts available soon that we can sell. Let's set a price right now, guys. What do you think? Uh, $37. I was going to go with free, but you have to love us. Will? Uh, can I get free t-shirts if I love you? <laughs> <laughs> no. The t-shirts will be the t-shirts will be available for I'm going to say $12. Would anyone pay $12 for a Jimmy Curve t-shirt? I don't know the answer to that, but we're going to find out. If you'd like one, send me an email. Let us know at thejimmycurve at gmail.com. Thoughts? I'm, I mean, where's my profit, Jimmy? <laughs> I, think, I think I'm paying $9 each for them, so it'll be $1. $3 split three ways. It'll be $1. I'm comfortable making $1 <laughs> per T-shirt. And if you're worried about buying a T-shirt that you don't know what it looks like, don't worry about it. We have it covered. <laughs> just trust us. Yeah, just trust us. Hey, this is dropping on Thanksgiving morning, hopefully, if I've had it edited in the future by then. So, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, Yay. it's my favorite holiday. Uh, it's my favorite holiday, too. So, I plan on getting this released by Thanksgiving morning. Uh, and then the following Saturday, I'm on a show at the back line, the Movember Benefit Show. Come out and see some stand-up comedy, uh, and we're going to try and raise some money to benefit prostate cancer awareness. We're not going to benefit prostate cancer. We're going to benefit prostate cancer research and awareness. I made that super confusing and weird. I apologize. But come to the back line <laughs> on Saturday, November 29th for the Movember uh, comedy show. I've not been able to shave all month, and it's super annoying because that's the promotion: is you grow your facial hair out for an entire month. Uh, and I started like midway through October, so it's way too long, and this sucks. So I can't wait to do that show and get it over with. But thanks for listening, and come out and see us do some comedy. Now, on to today's show, we have two very special guests today. Uh, they host the Doom Room Comedy Show, as well as several other shows that we're going to get to in a minute. We have Dan Schmidt. We made it. Woo! And Chris Dryden. What's going on? Welcome to the Jimmy Curve, guys. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming up tonight. How you guys doing? Great. Thanks for having yeah, us, Yeah, we are stoked to be here. All yeah. right. Fantastic. Uh, first of all, first question. Are you familiar with the concept of the Jimmy Curve? The actual graph itself and what it means. Actually, no. I am not. I have not explained that on the show in a while, so I'll run it by you really quick. Uh, the Jimmy Curve is this graph I came up with uh, to, to chart productivity versus intelligence. So it's a bell curve with intelligence on the x-axis and having your shit together on the y-axis. Okay. Essentially, the idea is that the dumbest people in the world, life completely fucked up. The smarter you get, the more you have your shit together. But at a certain point, you get too smart. And that's where you start losing your keys. You can never remember where you're parked. You're always late to everything. So, like, okay. think of the smartest people you know. Life completely fucked up still. Yes. That, it, it basically explains will. <laughs> that's, that's my life in a nutshell. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, hey. So go ahead. I mean, You're not that smart, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's start out with this fun game. Place each other on the Jimmy curve. Do you buy the concept, first of all? Yes, 100%. All right. Yeah, I, buy I, it. I have several people in mind I'm thinking of. <laughs> Dan Schmidt, where is Chris Dryden on the Jimmy curve? Well, I, I, of course, am at the peak of the Jimmy curve, also known as the sweet spot. Will is like barrel rolling down the far side <laughs> into fucked up smart splashdown. Uh, 
make making a comically huge snowball that's getting bigger and bigger <laughs> as it rolls down the far side. Chris, I I'd say Chris is also on the back end of that curve because as I was preparing to pick him up early so we could get here on time, he texted me and said, hold off. I lost my girlfriend at the mall and she had my phone. We're going to be late. Chris is the latest person I know. Always. That, that, as a rule, he is just late guy. But who was the last one here tonight? This well, guy. Nobody. Only because I rode with somebody else. That's the only reason. <laughs> Lateness is the nexus of intelligent and life fucked up. Like, it, it meets at being late to everything. Yes. Chris Dryden, where is Dan Schmidt on the Jimmy Curve? Um, I'd say he's going towards the downward slope right after intelligence. Just, like, kind of hit the precipice and he's going down. Um, like, he's just left the sweet spot. Yeah, just left the sweet spot. I mean, he's he's still real good at science and shit, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's real good at science and shit, but is, he's super depressed some days. <laughs> and well, that's yeah. We're all comedians. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. yeah. There and I he's am wearing in my a basement. Hogwarts hoodie. So you know, Dan Schmidt is wearing a Hogwarts hoodie. It looks like a Hogwarts sports jersey, uh, or like ho- like if they played hockey, maybe that would be a good. But uh, you can yeah. buy one at scienceandshit.com. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got this at Harry Potter World in Orlando. Wow. So you know it's legit. That's awesome. You went there on purpose. Yes. Legit <laughs> slash sad. It's also yes. red skin <laughs> colors, so Hogwarts is racist. <laughs> Redskins and Chiefs colors, actually. Mm, yeah. Both I'm... racist. <laughs> uh, actually, the Kansas City Chiefs are not named. F- it's not a Native American reference. So. Chief was the nickname of the mayor of Kansas City at the time the team was founded. And that's why they used the arrow? <laughs> no. <laughs> that that, came, that actually came later, but the, the team was theoretically named after a guy who, like, his nickname was, like, Chief. It's stupid because the whole thing is arrowhead. Redskins was named now. after Gary after he got a sunburn. That's, a, <laughs> that's all it was. Gary got a sunburn. Actually, that team was founded by Bill Redskin. Yeah, Very little known fact. <laughs> yeah, guys, get your shit straight. Jebediah Redskin. <laughs> We're good at the- science and shit, not history and shit, okay? <laughs> Dan does get bonus points for attending my alma mater, Kansas University, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Woo. Dan and I are high-fiving right now. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go in and tell the sto- the history of the Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Jayhawk chant because frankly it's boring but and it, you wouldn't get it <laughs> it's not it's not for beginners <laughs> that, that's the most condescending i can sound on that i think <laughs> uh cool uh next question i have for you guys in a war ravaged post-apocalyptic hellscape what do you see your place as in society uh and to give you some context we'll start with will doherty I actually know. I have I have two answers for this one. Yeah, uh, this came up on an earlier show. The the easy answer is meat. <laughs> right. I feel like that's my main contribution to society after the apocalypse. Right. But if it's not that, uh, I think I figured it out. Like it's like a zombie thing we're talking about, probably right. Could be anything. Could be could be a sort of crops all died out because we've flown too close to the sun. Could be a zombie right. thing. Right, we put could br- be a Mad Max type. We were watering all the crops with the Brondo, and now we're all <laughs> starving to death. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's here's what I think it is. Um, if it is if it is the zombie thing, I think my contribution is that uh, you know, like that scene that like just before like the second act turning point when the protagonists have to find like something horrific but kind of poignant. I'm the guy who committed suicide. <laughs> all right. So that the protagonist could find a tableau. Fantastic. Yeah, you're a plot device. Right. <laughs> a sad, sad plot device. Joshua Vossler, um, you are in college studying mortuary science. Yeah, which this might make sense then. I, I feel like I would be like a really good like cult leader. <laughs> All <laughs> like right. We're, we're going to need some of those, and I feel like I, I am qualified. Um, and uh, I'm just because I'm likable, you know, and I feel like... Uh, that's the point in my life would I, where I would have a following. We, we know, like now, we, we, <laughs> we know what Corey Brewer would be. I'm a janitor who farts a lot. <laughs> in a post-apocalyptic Jesus. hellscape, that wouldn't change. Uh, Dan Schmidt, what do you see your place as in that society? I would be the guy. I would go down for my bravery, uh, but it, but it would it would be 
uh, cowardice disguised as bravery because I would launch myself into a crowd of zombies because I would know that I wouldn't last at all. And I'd say, you uh. guys go on. I'll, I'll fend them off or whatever. But right. it would technically be suicide, but I'd, it would be disguised as me being brave for everyone right. else. Knowing full well that you couldn't survive more than a day, you'd try to throw yourself on a grenade in the first hour. Yep. Totally. I, I, I'd immediately <laughs> give up. I, 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 just <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good answer. If I see one zombie, I'm, I'm out. Chris Dryden. Well, if I'm not raptured, um, mm. I, will be, <laughs> <laughs> I will be Nick Cage in the Left Behind movie. No, um, no none of us have seen that. I, I haven't seen it. So, um, oh, shoot. I'll be raptured. But... Um, <laughs> The other one is my goal is to live in like a tiny self-sustaining like home. Okay. Made out of like a storage unit like somewhere in the woods. Right. So like with its own power source. Yeah. Solar power, you know that kind of stuff. Nice. This isn't a hypothetical. This is just your goal. Yeah, right? for real. Like I want to live in a tiny <laughs> house. True. I love the shit out of them. Especially like, the cute ones on trailers with yeah. Huh. Not not like a hobbit hole, but like a No, it no. It's got to be movable just in case, you know, oh, like okay. stuff, you know, kind of hit shit hits the fan, you got to be mm -hmm. able to go. But it's like anything under 200 square feet, pretty cool. Chris, are you a survivalist? No, nah, not at all. <laughs> are I, you a religious fellow? May, may fuel you, but uh, um, yes. Oh, okay. Well, no, I'm, I'm a man, I'd say I'm a man of faith more than I'm a, a religious fellow. Explain the difference. Um, well, Did I beat you to it, Will? No, I was just it, about Will. to scream cop out into the mic. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. It's true. Um, no, I... Uh, we haven't really talked about religion on this thing. show other than to uh, occasionally mention that we're all atheists. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you like Jesus or do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. Okay. When it comes down to it. Um, yeah. I mean, if you had to, would you accept Jesus inside you? I mean, if you had to. Well, God I already make have. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyways. Um, do you really want me so to you, explain that? No. Oh, okay, good. No, you, you would be raptured good enough. We don't have to go into that. Is, <laughs> that, is, it, is it too weird? I don't know. I think we should get into this. It's the least weird thing we could talk about today, in all honesty. <laughs> you all have right. no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for it. Oh, I mean, if we really want me to. Um, Proselytize, I, mean, I would say. I would say that like religion is the idea of following a set of guidelines and rules. And two, I mean, you have basically rituals that you follow and things like that and there mm -hmm. there is some sense of you know um ritual to it i don't know out of respect things like that for some of it but i mean none of those things that i would do as far as going to church on sunday or you know things like that that's that's not what i believe decides my salvation what decides my salvation is my faith in christ and then um the outward um sign of that <laughs> as you move my mic would just be the way i treat people <laughs> um my goal to you know be Christ to other people and be kind to them. That's you know, treat people how they want to be treated. Yeah, being a nice person is a good yeah. is a good manifestation of that. Uh, Dan Schmidt, how do you be? How do you maintain being a nice person? Everyone wants to view themselves as a nice guy. No one's like, oh, I'm an asshole. Uh, some people do. Actually, well, <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm a nice person. Okay, I, I, I'm a hypocrite in that. But I, it's. It's more the desire to want to be kind to people, and I, you know, I definitely, I definitely know plenty of nice people that are not Christians by any means, and that's I don't think you have to be, or you know, I don't think that that's the case. Ha have you ever been on a podcast before? Um, <laughs> no. Well, welcome to the beginning of your career in Christian radio yeah. broadcasting, <laughs> and <laughs> losing my career in everything else. You ha ju you have the voice oh, of like a okay. Christian, like right, like introducing like Christian hey rock bands and stuff. You guys, you guys love Jesus. Yes. <laughs> well, you guys want to rap about the Lord? He, here's the here's the interesting thing. You mentioned like the Left Behind movie before. Like the Left Behind movie made a huge profit, and like no one I know saw it, but a bunch of Christians did. Like the thing about Christianity is that if you're going to be in some sort of performance medium, like comedy or radio or filmmaking, there is a huge built-in audience right there for you already. Christian comedians, none of us have ever heard of them, but they make a lot of money. They do. There's always shows. The downside is I have dropped the F-bomb, I think, three times already, and that's <laughs> not, doesn't fly. 
you don't want to be known as the edgy Christian comedian. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't get you raptured. <laughs> That's true. I, I feel like screaming "fuck the devil" has a place, like at a Christian comedy show. Yeah, priests get a new ten minutes every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> they're up there. They're up there at the altar. They've got to oh, come up oh, with a right. homily, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, what's it called? Sermon. Sermon. Yeah. There you go. Or you know, you could be one of those guys who like handles a snake in a tent. Yeah, like, that's, that that would be entertaining. <laughs> sure. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like, although I feel my my faith is important to me, I feel like I just contributed the lamest moment that's ever happened on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like some people will find that interesting. I think I'm just going to lead into every podcast I do with it. You guys want to talk about the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, guys want to talk about Jesus a little bit? <laughs> oh, see, I, I'm, I'm not religious at all, and I was raised super Catholic, and I love arguing about it because I was raised super Catholic. Right. And here's the thing. Like, I, I, there are so many people who like to use, like, kind of the statement that you made about how, like, you know, I'm not necessarily religious, but I have faith or I have a spirituality. And if you're raised Catholic, you don't get to say that. Yeah. They won't let you. Right. Uh, and so now that hits me as such a weird thing that, like, other people believe. It's like, no, religion, you either have to be believe it and be in for all their rules or out the door. Isn't that how religions work? God, well, I, well, I don't know. Because I don't think that on my own, on my own, I have the ability to follow those rules. And in all honesty, I don't. And so I'm, I'm not saying that's how it should be. I'm saying that's what I was yeah, left no, I with in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that 100%. And that's unfortunately the mindset that most people have about it or what, you know, the view most people have of it. I'm, I'm an atheist, but I found out in my early 30s that I'm ethnically and technically Jewish. Which was a weird religious experience go. for me. Like Comedy it was makes sense. very bizarre. When my grandmother passed away, we were like going through her things. Like mm, a star of David, that's weird. Like <laughs> no one talks about that, you know. But like technically, I'm Jewish. Pretty weird. But uh, you know, at this point, it was too late to start giving a shit about stuff. It's so. one thing to boost your comedy career. You know, you'd think, <laughs> you'd think. But here's the thing: the market is saturated with overweight Jews. So, like, it doesn't really help you. All it does, it, it is weird. I did notice that, like, all of my other comedian friends are jealous when I say that. Like, oh, dude, I totally wish I was Jewish. And it's the only time and place in the history of the world where that's true. Where you can, <laughs> where you can suddenly find out you're Jewish and everybody's totally jealous. Everywhere, everywhere well, else in history would be like, fucking keep that shit quiet, dude. I mean, given the way history kind of goes in waves, eventually it won't be again. I mean, no, that's, that's just how it goes. No, somebody's going to start rounding up the Jews before long. Like, it's going to happen. <laughs> but like right now is a weird sweet spot in time where you can find out you're Jewish and all of your friends are super stoked and like jealous of you and like, wow, that's amazing. But yeah, the rest of the time it, they'd just be like, fucking run. Just run right now. So, But all of a sudden, like in another 50 years, all at once, the one guy in every group of friends who kind of sounds like Seth Rogen is just going to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> if they're messianic Jews. Let's, I mean, let's be right. <laughs> it's, it's, right, yeah, it's, right. it's all kinds of... Let's talk about comedy. You guys host a comedy show called Doom Room that takes place monthly. Uh, explain how that works, what it is, what the show is. Um, Doom Room is a show that is the first Thursday of every month. Um, what it is, is it's basically a ripoff of the set list, which is comedy without a safety net. So, um, what we do is we get a, um, local performers, whoever's in town or whoever wants to come around, and then we send them up on stage, um, to perform jokes that they've never seen before. And we have a screen up there, and we then throw topics that we've come up with or audiences submitted, things like that, on that screen, and they have to perform bits based on that. Just kind of free-form improv. We don't call it improv. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Yeah, no. Chris, Chris is very adamant about not calling it improv. Yeah. We call comedy. it just be funny. Yeah, we, it's comedy, so you know, you know, you don't want to mix the two. Right. I started out doing improv before I ever I'm did stand-up for a long time. I don't time. mean that at That's all. That's okay. That's okay. The, 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 what I've found about improv is that it's just a, it, it's neither here nor there for most people. No one knows what it is. Like, generally, when you say improv, they're like, is, are you trying to improve something? Or, like, what? Nobody knows. Like, I, when I say I do well, long, there, long form improv, 99% of the people in my life have no idea what that is. 
So I mean, people have a perception of improv, right? But isn't it just like whose who's line it isn't anyway? Yeah, right. Which is the good stuff, I think. I don't know. And so, it, it is. It, it it's funny. And it's oh, like, you Christians <laughs> love your short form, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he said it. He said it. it is funny. So like the stuff that makes you laugh, that's the good stuff. Oh, <laughs> long form. Long form at its best is awesome. It's amazing. It's just way more hit and miss. It's way. It's way harder to do. Yeah. But at its best, it's great. Uh, short form uh, is uh, you you can you move on from the misses so much faster. Yeah. That I think it, it is entertaining to crowd. I think it's more entertaining to crowds in a lot of cases. But I think they both work. But yeah, I mean, uh, what you do is an improv, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, when I joke about it, I genuinely don't mean it. Like. I've seen some really cool improv shows, and I've seen some really terrible ones, and I know that I can't do it. <laughs> I literally, I host a show with Dan that I'm too afraid to actually do sets on, because I, it's gone terribly before. We had, a, we had a special guest on the show last month. I told Chris that I was going to bring up somebody special, and it was Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so I made him do it, and he was yeah. sick and freaking out. I mean, Will was there. What, I mean, Will did the show last month. What did, I mean, would you compare it to improv, or what would you think? I mean, um... The form is stand-up comedy. The fact that it improv is improvised, it still feels closer to stand-up comedy than it does to like a long-form improv show. Yeah, no, it's not long-form improv, but it is improvised stand-up, oh, yeah. Yeah, which definitely. is its own yes, thing. Correct. So, uh, yeah, I mean, how have you found the crowds have received it? It really just depends on the performer. It really does. <laughs> like, yeah. people- I saw, I saw Sam Talent come through and be so goddamn funny on yeah. that show. Oh yeah, he's so great. fucking funny. Um. A big thing of it is, is just if it's if the show's set up well from like the host perspective, of like, look, this is hard as fuck. Right. You need to like let these people think and like and, and, and just kind of give them some grace on this. And then generally, people are warm about it. Like even if it's not the funniest thing, if you get one laughter and you can just you know one laugh, you can just beat the shit out of that laugh and just keep it going. Sometimes I don't know if that made any sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Probably the hand motions helped. Right. So- <laughs> Visual gag. It's a sight gag for all our listeners. I think the thing that's similar about that show to another improv show is that you kind of get the free credit as a performer that people are really excited that they're seeing something being made up on the spot. Yes. And you get so much leeway from that. A joke that's like a kind of okay joke, and they know you haven't told it before, they'll lose their goddamn mind. Nice. Uh, and you also host other shows. You host a show called Potty Talk. Is that both of you? Yep, yep. we do. And so. and what is that? That's a so that's a third Friday of every month. Um, that's at the side door, thirty fifth and Leavenworth. And uh, we kind of focus on. We always want like an out of town headliner. Did, did we say where Doom Room is at? Did we say that's oh. at Brothers? Yeah, yep. Brothers. 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 All right. Anyway, sorry. Um, and so you know, the last one we just had uh, when Ian Abramson was in town, he came through with a couple people from Kansas City and Lawrence. Uh, we're getting some people from Chicago in December. So Potty Talk is a very fun show, and that's just normal stand-up showcase. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we'll interview the people, uh, the comedians that are on the show, nice. at least um, you know the ones from out of town, just kind of get a little a little flavor of their background. That's so, fun. Yeah, that's a great. Uh, I love the room. Side door is a great place. Uh, and is there is there any sort of specific theme for sets, or just do your set? Nope, just do your set. Um, Be as funny as you can. The idea of potty talk, um, it's a really like. So I had a like a website built and everything like that. Uh, we want to create like a, an empire out of it, and like I don't know. It's Dan lame. Dan is laughing. He, yeah. Well, okay. Here's why it gets ridiculous. Okay, so potty talk is this completely unoriginal idea that I had one time that I thought it would be great to interview people in the bathroom. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> here's where the idea gets really like it, wait. great, great natural tones in the bathroom. Yeah, natural well, reverb. No, I just thought it would be funny to interview people in their bathrooms and do that kind of thing. I googled potty talk. I found absolutely nothing except for like different like you know comedy groups or sketch groups or things like that. There are other people out there using that, but not exactly doing what I wanted to do until I posted something about it on Facebook and one of my. Facebook friends decided to tag one of his friends and say, hey, Kevin, you hear about this shit? So I look at this Kevin guy. <laughs> sure enough, Kevin in Omaha, Nebraska hosts a show called Potty Talk in his bathroom. It's <laughs> not as creepy if you're just looking at breasts <laughs> or an ass. <laughs> Who are you I, using? I found a way to work it in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that idea then was given up and... 
No, we is still it, interview people just not in the bathroom. Is this yeah. is this is this Kevin Fella actually still doing the show? Oh uh, yeah, he started up doing it. Actually, he's really really cool. Um, nice. I added him as a friend on Facebook, and I, I messaged him because like for one thing. I Googled this, and I didn't find anything. I looked on YouTube. I didn't find anything except for, like, some sketch groups and things like that. And then to find out that there is a dude doing exactly what I want to do in <laughs> Omaha, in Nebraska. Omaha. Was like, so, like, you need to tell Kevin, like, Kevin, you really got to work on your SEO here because you were trying to find it, and you couldn't. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's true. And he was cool about it, though, and he's like, oh, you can keep doing the show. You do the pod- or, like do your interviews and things like that, but he asked that I don't do it in the bathroom. That was the one thing. I was like, that's All fine, right. man. You know, I'm totally cool with that. Nice. Well, that's well, there you go. Well, that's good. We'll look forward to seeing that show. And then, Dan, you host Agree to Disagree, uh, which is another comedy show. You guys do a lot of hosting. Yeah. A lot We're of busy. hosting. We're busy dudes. Uh, Agree to Disagree, Will and I are going to be on the next w- Agree to Disagree show, which is essentially a show where, you know, I don't really know what it is. But I'm going to do it. So what are we supposed to do? All right. Well, let me explain it right now. Glad you're going to do it. Uh, So essentially what happens is, uh, you know, we have two comedians up on stage at the same time. Only one is talking at Mm -hmm. a time, though. So they're kind of debating at the other person. So basically you'll have, um, you know, person A goes for five minutes. B goes for five minutes, and then you both get a five-minute rebuttal. Nice. So back and forth. Obviously, you know, not a whole lot of people take the, the full 10, but, you know, it gets crazy. Last time, uh, John Tom suplexed Nick Rowley, so it got really <laughs> – it got personal and intense. Yeah. To be fair, Nick Rowley is not that hard to lift. <laughs> he is a tiny man. He is a tiny man. <laughs> but, all right, cool. Well, that'll be fun. And then – and do you assign most people their topics that they are arguing we, about? We have su- suggested topics that Vimosi and I will send out that – Gryffindor you know, versus Slytherin. Oh, that could – oh, my God. That could get so intense. <laughs> Hufflepuff if, if versus only, Ravenclaw. Oh, come on. I know all Hufflepuff, four. Hu- Hufflepuff, you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Ravenclaw would slaughter those guys. Oh. But, so, I mean, Please, got- Hufflepuff versus a light breeze would be an even match. <laughs> So I have uh, no clue what they're talking about. Fucking yeah. Hufflepuff. Chris has never read a book before. But, so, yeah, we'll start um, the Bible. Re- <laughs> <laughs> and I said we're good at science and shit. <laughs> Creationist science. Anyways. Jo- Joshua just apologized for getting to the mic faster than me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fair because it's not like that's just another race I have to lose. That's not cool. <laughs> so, uh, agree to disagree. Where, where does that take place again? Uh, that's at the Sydney in Benson. Sydney, and that's cool. the last Thursday of every month, except for this November and December uh, because of Thanksgiving and Christmas. Get up in that mic. Uh, Get yeah. up in this mic. Sydney's a cool bar, man. Yeah, it is. It's a good place. I like that bar. All right, cool. Uh, so go see all of those shows. Uh, they will all be an A plus every time because that's how comedy works. One last plug as well. So Do this it. this is not. Uh, so this is a potty talk presents. It's uh, your plug. Chris and I. Are <laughs> I couldn't, God, I love that jingle. Uh, Chris and I are also bringing Derek Sheen to the side door. So that's a Potty Talk Presents, and that's going to be on December 7th. Tell us a little bit about Derek Sheen. So he is a comedian out of Seattle. Uh, His debut album came out uh, two years ago, I believe, Uh, Holy Drivel. He is an amazingly funny guy. He's going on tour again and starting with us in Omaha on his 45th birthday. So we're going to throw a big old birthday bash for him. And then he's uh, got a a little tour through the Midwest, and his second album's coming out uh, early next year. Kick ass. Go see that show. It's your plug. All right. <laughs> that gets that out of the way. Let's uh, let's move on to the next topic. This show, uh, this episode is going to drop on Thanksgiving Day, November 27th, 2014. On Friday, November 28th, 2014, our very special guest, Chris Dryden, is getting married. That's my plug. Yeah. <laughs> it's your <laughs> plug. <laughs> yeah, get married. Uh, why? <laughs> um, this one's too good to let go. What's yeah? What's her deal? Um, sh- well, she was dumb enough to fall in love with me. <laughs> so that's but yeah. Uh, essentially, this room after you get married will hold like ninety percent of the married comedians in Nebraska because. All three hosts on this show are married, and there aren't a ton of others. There are very, very few. I mean, Ryan De La Garza is married. Mike yep. Perry. 
Mike Perry is married? Yeah, yep. he has two kids. Kyle O'Reilly. I didn't know that. So there's more than I thought. <laughs> so maybe half then. So you're joining our ranks. Congratulations. Yeah, hey, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. hey. <laughs> so uh, for, uh, I'm sorry for the second time he's getting married. I don't think that was mentioned. <laughs> How uh, Christian yeah, of you? Two. Well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I did want to have sex again. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> the once during my first marriage was fun, so I figure you know one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It has its upside. Uh, that's true. Uh, so you're how old are you? Twenty six. Twenty six. Okay, that's pretty young. Uh, Arguably, in our society, <laughs> like that's a little young for your first marriage. It's true. So Very true. What went wrong? <laughs> <laughs> a whole litany of things. No. Um, Are you from Nebraska? No, not originally. I'm a military brat. So oh, okay. Moved around a little bit, but I've been in Omaha for the last well, Bellevue for like the last 15 years. So, um, did I you find I'm her reading a book about evolution, and you're just like, this <laughs> is it, <laughs> done. <laughs> No, it was even worse. It was even worse. She sided. She sided with Hufflepuff in the great, <laughs> in the Great House debate. Yeah. yeah, witchcraft. I'm not. I'm not about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's better than a divorce is like a burning at the stake. Between that and her Illuminati ties, you know, I couldn't. Oh, you know, I couldn't have that. Man, this this woman has so many things going no. for her. Um. No, I, I mean, we know why marriages end. They end because they're supposed to end. So I'll be honest. It ended because I was a dick. But it, she was a dick, too. Like, we were both dicks. Like, yeah. can... <laughs> I, is it she, she, she just got remarried, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a couple months ago. Um, Good for her. Yeah. yeah. My, can I, I want to ask... I, I, my question isn't how did your marriage end? Because, yeah, we know how marriages end. How did your marriage start? Um... This is where it gets weird, too, because in sixth grade, I equated women to food um, <laughs> and not wanting to stock up on uh, the same kind of food until I got sick of it and ended up getting food poisoning. Mm. And I was like, I'm going to live by this. This is what, you know, this is my, my life motto right here. And then in the grocery store, I met my ex-wife and I thought, she's pretty cool. I'll take this home and keep this forever. <laughs> <laughs> Two wow, years later, that, still that, had food poisoning. That could not have been stated in a more creepy way. <laughs> <laughs> she, got, oh. I was, am I missing something here? Do, do I do I need to get married? What's going on? What's the deal? No, no. <laughs> Josh I mean, with a resounding no. It's worked out pretty great for me. Like uh, I, I'm super antisocial, and I have like, like I I don't know. I have really bad like um, oh, what's it called? Uh, I can't think of the term. People skills? Yeah, that, like, I just, I get super nervous around people. Like, I get really uncomfortable meeting people. Social anxiety. That's there it. You go. Social anxiety. Right. Like, I have really bad social anxiety. And, like, since I, like, my wife, I met her in college, and we get along really well. Like, we never fight. We're best friends. And the best part of being married to her is that I don't have to meet any other people. Like I never have, I never have to I, go on another I date. I totally no, I totally get that. I'm totally fine with that. I hate dating. I hate it. It sounds like the most. I'm 36 and I haven't been on a date in 17 years and it's or whatever 16 years and it sounds like the most terrifying thing ever to me. Like yeah. it sounds oh, yeah. it's awful. Meeting new people is terrible. If if I you know what's great about being married is some of my best material is wife jokes. So it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I I don't know. I decided marriage just isn't the enemy. You know, that wasn't the mm -hmm. issue. In my now, an another side of this, Chris, is that you are a straight edger. Yeah. Is the not having sex outside of marriage thing a part of your straight edging? Well, is straight edger the name of your cult? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because stra Southern for Baptist some straight edge, to be specific. <laughs> um, no. For some straight edgers, it's no drugs, no alcohol. For no, some okay. it's no. It's not premarital sex, technically, when it comes down to it. Um, that would be more my faith based thing. You know, I was like, look, you know, I want to live this way. No, um, straight edge is completely independent of my faith, all that kind of stuff. It's just inspired by the music I listen to. And I should have introduced you as Omaha's minor threat. <laughs> Omaha <laughs> comedy's minor yeah, right. threat. I'd get called a poser so hard. <laughs> I do love minor threat, though. Um, 
<laughs> no, like, it's just a personal choice. Like, basically, I saw my friends doing stupid shit all the time, getting drunk and mm-hmm. smoking weed in high school. And I was like, I don't want to do any of that shit. And then to answer your question about promiscuity and things like that, it was more just like the, oh, fuck anybody you want to, sleep with anybody you want to, who cares, just fuck everything. And that, that to me, is kind of... I feel like it degrades people to some extent. I'm to me, it j- to me, it just seems exhausting. You, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it sounds like fun. That, well, that's why you need the drugs, obviously. You know, right. Speaking yeah. of drugs, uh, we do have a, a gift for you guys. Oh, uh, so what th- is this? Th- thank you very much for for letting us be on the Jimmy <laughs> Kirk today. Oh no, I need the black. I need Black Panther. Oh, that's for oh, my Chris wedding weekend. Wants the black Panther. I'm oh sorry. my God, what is this? Uh, so Chris and I were at the gas station earlier today, and uh, we found some boner pills on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And it's literally individually packaged uh, pills. That you take for rock hard erections. This is literally what it says on the package. Yeah, this is called the Black Mamba Two Premium. Yeah, I have Black Panther time, size, and stamina. First increases time of intercourse, lasting, lasting your sex time. <laughs> this is terribly worded. <laughs> Second increases size and rock hard, grow length and width, and third. Increases stamina and sex drive, gain intense orgasm, rocket powerful. Now my now my girlfriend is in pharmacy school and she freaked out when I showed her that. She am was I like, s- "Don't throw those away. Don't give those to anyone. Don't take those." Am I supposed to read this with a racist accent? Because that's what it's, it's <laughs> I like, was going to say something about that. I think you seven, are seven, seven days, days long, long action. action. <laughs> <laughs> that- Fuck. But no, mine, no headaches. So, I mean, no headaches. No headaches. That's all. Oh, mine must give you super headaches. Which are they talking about? <laughs> oh, what? Oh, this is fantastic. Black Literally. Panther. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's <laughs> all. <laughs> Triple maximum. Triple maximum. Oh, <laughs> man. Wow. Thank you so much for the gifts. Uh, they yeah. were expensive. Yeah. Will's actually going to take his, just so you know. Like that's. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> oh, he took he it on the podcast. It. He <laughs> just <laughs> took it. Will oh. just swallowed I that. Already, I already drank all my water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Here's a full one. Oh my god, do oh, you? Oh, uh, it's gonna get weird. <laughs> Will, don't. Oh, you should not have done that. I'm waiting for my wedding weekend. This is the best <laughs> moment of my life. I mean, I mean. Odds are it's just plastic and sugar, but like now we have right. to hang out with Will oh, no, to see my what happens. new wife is getting seven days long action. I tell you that <laughs> I can't last with seven no minutes. What do I need seven days for? No, here's the thing: is that no headache for me or for my wife when she tries to use that excuse? Oh, it, 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 oh man! Also, I need to reiterate: I don't want to equate women to food. I thought of that in high school, so that should be enough. Mine says all natural until Will Doherty takes it. <laughs> <laughs> Mine says amount per serving, percentage daily value, but gives no numbers for those things. <laughs> so it's just you got your whole daily value of Black Mamba. Who wants to deal with numbers and math? <laughs> Increased no. volume of ejaculation. <laughs> oh, man. Mine says, uh, as a dietary supplement, take one capsule 30 minutes prior to intended sexual activity. <laughs> so let's, we got to wrap this up, guys. Yes. We are currently at the 39 minute mark of recording this podcast. We usually aim for about an hour, so get ready, Mrs. Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> Is your sexual confidence increased? <laughs> uh, Jimmy, you might need to hide your cat. <laughs> it's, uh, I think I think I can feel my sexual confidence increasing, you guys. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, uh, man, that was super exciting. I'm gonna take a it says no prescription necessary. No shit. Where'd you guys buy this? <laughs> Gas yeah. station. Yeah, and, and a tobacco and phones. And he didn't. And he didn't. He didn't write you a prescription first. No the gas station attendant. But he did promise me the. Uh, Better ejaculation control? Yeah. That's huge. You got to control that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I need to be able to hit those eggs. Yeah, you don't want it spraying around like a fire hose. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so also what ha- what happened with this is Chris and I went to the gas station. We were joking around with the with the employees for a while, and they thought it was all fun. Like, we were being funny with them, and then we left, and we're like, oh, yeah, that's funny. And then I was like, hey, we should 
get those for the show, <laughs> for the podcast, and give them to everybody. So I went back like two hours later, and it was different employees. <laughs> and and Chris was gone, so I was just by myself. And so then I just bought all four of these, and I was just like, oh. Did, did you, did you Thanksgiving, you know? Yeah, early Christmas <laughs> present, and the guy's like, yeah. He's going to stuff okay. that turkey. <laughs> <laughs> One of each, please. <laughs> did, did you I feel mean, obligated to start shouting out, it's for a joke, it's for a joke. No, nope. like super. <laughs> left it at that. Early Christmas presents, thanks, bye. Bye. Grandma's coming for Thanksgiving. Oh, Chris Grandpa's his grandma. <laughs> in in fairness, if you had gone back and it was the same employees, they were just going to think like, oh, he finally got up the nerve to buy it. Good for him. <laughs> Don't take more than one of these in, th- in 60 hours. Oh, uh, that's terrible. Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and pause right here and we'll come back and do some news. Joshua. 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 Bossler. News. Hello, everybody. Pacific Ocean, more like the Dead Sea. (laughs) 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 Five, five hundred dead sea lions ended up on a Peruvian (laughs) beach, and no one knows why. Uh, The sea lions were found rotting on a beach about 250 miles north of Lima. Uh, The sea lions were. So decomposed, the authorities couldn't immediately determine the cause of death. This is where, this was in South America, Peru, Peru, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. which is in South America. Five hundred dead sea lions. Yes, how Peru. They, and here we are. How they get rid of them? Don't XL. Meanwhile, in a related story, five hundred stuffed polar bears crawled up on the beach <laughs> a mile down. <laughs> no, I don't. Know. In Peru, There's no polar bears in Peru. <laughs> what is? What, is there anything there that eats it? sharks? I don't know. Um, actually, uh, according to the article I read, there is a, uh, uh, like a, the governor or a governor down there, some political, uh, politician is claiming that Paul, uh, that, uh, fishermen poisoned them, uh, with no evidence you know, as far th- as I could tell. I feel like I hear a story like this every so often, like every couple of years where it'll just be like, 10,000 bats dropped out of the sky dead or something like that. Or like there's one where just like a bunch of birds fell out of the air and it ended up being some like weird radio frequency thing or whatever it was, low pressure. Just, I don't even know. Well, it, sometimes they just don't know. They don't ever figure out why these things happen. And Peru is, this is nothing new in Peru in 2012. Uh, close to 900 dead dolphins turned up in the, the Peruvian northern coast. God doesn't make things easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris. Why did God kill a, bu- a, bu- a bunch of unarmed seals? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was literally texting you that because I didn't want to say it on the air. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, circle of life, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, circle of life. Uh, Hashtag seals lives matter. Hashtag Ferguson. <laughs> But uh, okay. we gotta edit that out. That's <laughs> gotta be. That's gotta <laughs> no way. No way. But all right. But seriously though, how do you get rid of that? So what's the cleanup process? They just like threw them away. <laughs> they like they <laughs> like in a dumpster. <laughs> yeah, they like collected yeah. them. Have you seen the, them dispose of like dead whales? Like there's videos on yeah, the internet of them like blowing up. up whales. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. So like there's they just. Uh, the theory was that fishermen poisoned them. The guy, that's what that's what a politician said down there. But I mean, it could be it could be disease. It could be you know you know if it's it's if it's poison, uh, that's more plausible than I would think of like pollution because then you'd you'd see more different kind of animals washing do, up on do shore. Do seals than, get STDs? Because <laughs> there is a fucking plague well <laughs> what what's his angle on this i mean what what could be his you yeah. know his thing why would he say the fisherman the anti-fisherman's lobby probably yeah. <laughs> he's taking a cut you know the tofu lobby he's right re- greenpeace he's, is paying him to say this he's right. really pro cattle farming and with the you know fishing <laughs> industry you know not people buying beef you know it's happening that's right down there in peru I don't know. I don't know what the per- the political climate of Peru is like. I don't know. They're very they're very pro sea lion. We're glo- we're global here on the Jimmy Curve, but no downloads from Peru yet. We did get a couple from uh, Brazil. We have like three downloads from Brazil. So to all of our Brazilian listeners, Konnichiwa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't know. Like it is weird though because they never. Yeah, you see like. 
t- a thousand bats just drop out of the sky dead. That shit is freaky, but like the earth does weird stuff and occasionally kills big groups of things. Yeah, it's it's uh it's a uh, it's a mystery. So uh, but we act like it's uh just like inconceivable, but it happens to people. Like sometimes whole big groups of people just drop dead. What? You know. Well, you, I mean you alluded to it earlier, just like black death. Like, oh yeah, like maybe a it's plague just like or whatever. Yeah, it's just like uh, you know, seals all just like coughed on each other, and now they're dead. <laughs> like, Theoretically, that could happen. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It is yeah. Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ebola. Hashtag Ebola. Uh, what else you got? Uh, well, you guys know how I like them thick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Scientists have discovered that the ice in the Ant- uh, Antarctic is uh, much thicker than they had, had uh, su- suspected. Until now, scientists have measured ice thickness using satellite images, visual estimates, and drilling holes into the ice. Uh, but in Antarctica, uh, much of the floating ice is actually underwater, uh, which ice is so thick that drilling and satellite images just don't work that well yeah that's that's yeah the ice is thick because that's where the predators keep their hidden temple yep where they uh hunt humans and aliens for sport that movie was so bad oh it was great you were you're <laughs> no. you're entirely wrong uh, about that damn, that's <laughs> cool nerd shit not <laughs> hogwarts shit <laughs> sorry that's go on science shit. well a- alien versus predator uh, Continue. i would have dropped in my uh, fortress of solitude reference here but you don't deserve ah. it <laughs> The past four years, a team of researchers from the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia Australia have been deploying uh, an uh, autonomous underwater vehicle they call Seabed, pretty original, uh, to explore areas uh, that divers and other uh, machinery can't reach. Using the sonar uh, measures from underneath, opposed to above, and so they're getting a more accurate... uh, uh, a mount description. They can describe how much ice is actually there better. So, hey, Al Gore, balls in your court. <laughs> <laughs> and they, and so Seabed found that Malaysian flight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, w- what's the end game? Are they, they're trying to figure out, well, like, what's frozen in the ice, or like what? Well, I mean, I, I mean what? What it's saying is that there's the ice has sustained better than they originally thought, meaning like the ice caps aren't melting as rapidly as initially believed, right? Right, and in the same article, um, I mean, this was published in the Journal of Natural Geoscience, and they uh, in the article it references Live Science or Live Science, I think, right. dot com. Uh, that the claim that sea ice has actually been growing in the Antarctic uh, by 1.2 percent to 1.8 percent a year mm-hmm. uh, since 1979. Um, so I mean, maybe we just don't know that much about uh, how much ice is out there. That's basically why I decided to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one of those things that's going to become a political issue at some point where people are going to. Like try and use it to make global warming arguments that we've all heard <laughs> six million times and don't care about anymore, right? Is like the global warming thing is exhausting. We're all tired of that. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Here, let's let's here. We're we're all tired enough of it that we're comfortable dying. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's play a little game. Uh, Josh, you are going to be a scientist who is asking for grant money to do this study. Uh, Dan Schmidt. You are going to be playing a Republican senator who believes that global warming is a farce. Uh, And, Will, you'll be playing a Democratic senator who believes that global warming is currently actively killing us. Uh, Present your case, Josh. Uh, Well, excuse me, Senator. Um, (laughs) I would like to request some funds because, uh, some, believe it or not, some scientists actually believe that ice isn't as thin as it is. Uh, we originally thought, please give us $5 billion. <laughs> Why not make it 10 <laughs> For ice. You want, money, you want money to research ice? Yes, ice, or also known as frozen water. You know, the, the, the real threat is over in the Middle East. 
<laughs> is is under underneath underneath their lands. I think there's more oil over there than we originally thought. I believe you're right. The real threat is over in the Middle East, and maybe we can do some research about how to take some ice over there and drop it on top of the Middle East. They'd never stand a chance. Chris Dryden bursts into the room. He's a libertarian activist of some kind. <laughs> Yeah. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the extent of my improv. And for those, for those who think it means improve, I am not making much. <laughs> that went extremely not well. Much ground. <laughs> good, um, good job, Dan. Turn I'm on that turn. I didn't see that coming, but that was good. Uh, the old diversion to war. Uh, it was fun. Good job, guys. Uh, round of applause, and let's do one more, one more news story, and then we'll wrap it up. Katy Perry will be joining the exclusive ranks of stars to take the stage at the Super Bowl halftime show on February first. Um, <laughs> what? You say it into the mic. She hit that boobs and butt oh, plug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not as boobs. creepy if you're just looking at breasts or an ass. <laughs> Boobs and butt plugs, what you said, Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you think about it, this decision isn't so weird. Uh, Katy Perry commands Twitter's largest following, currently a hefty 60.4 million followers, and has a resume that includes nine number one Billboard top 100 hits. All I can say is is wardrobe malfunction, huh, <laughs> guys? <laughs> I, I I would normally not care about something like this, but some of the le most recent Super Bowl halftime shows have been epically awesome. Like Beyonce kicked ass. Beyonce fucking was owned that shit. She like, rules with the other members of Destiny's Child popping up through the floor. That was the bomb. And then like Prince before that, Prince was awesome. Yep. I mean, you can do anything with the Illuminati's help. I mean, that's you know. <laughs> oh God. Uh, pr uh, Prince is a Jehovah's Witness, I believe. That's close enough. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Kim trails all that shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so like I am kind of disappointed in that. Like, Katy Perry's gonna come out and lip sync. Like, uh, uh, uh. I saw Katy Perry live, and I can say hands down is one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. Really? Oh, it was it was cool. <laughs> it was a fucking performance. Right. There's no music, it's but the most generic thing i can say is it was a fucking performance but right it was, it was a good performance there yeah <laughs> yeah I, uh, that's incidentally katie perry uh one of those performers you were talking about earlier who uh, got her start in the old christian music racket oh really then she found the illuminati google it it's in there it's in the youtube <laughs> and uh look who she is now this is the second consecutive podcast where we're ending with some conspiracy theory shit. <laughs> oh, I got lost. Because <laughs> Jack just tried to tell us that uh, the fluoride in the water was poisoning us uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the last episode. It's not. Uh, it, I, I, more specifically, I think it was fluorine, chlorine, whatever is in the water. <laughs> <laughs> He's not at the same level of science and shit that Dan and I are. <laughs> What are, what are some of your other conspiracy theories? Oh, shit, I don't believe any of them. Uh, but I love watching, like... I mean, you do believe you're getting raptured. Oh, that, well, <laughs> I mean, the Christianity conspiracy is a big one. Um, no, I I just love watching those goofy videos, like the end-time prophecy stuff. Not, okay. I hate to say goofy, because there's some, like, things to it that I don't totally disagree with. But, like, when they start talking about how, like... Pop culture is influencing the 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 end times. The Illuminati is pushing all these messages to us, and like One Direction is really the Antichrist. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't. Dan Schmidt, what kind of videos do you like to watch on the internet? Uh, I'm pretty big into weird like mashup videos. So like Bert and Ernie rapping, and <laughs> you know, we weird crap like that. Have you seen the what is it? Uh, the bad lip reading. Oh yeah, those are those the... are awesome. Great. Fucking funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. If you've not seen bad lip reading videos, they are the best. Uh, those I, are good. Kind of, kind of goes in spurts, I guess. You know, for a while, is into like really intense, like nasty, like Joe Theismann break your leg and all these people. You know, whatever. <laughs> oh my God, sports leg breaks are the worst. Oh, they're terrible. And for so, like, you know, uh, the who, Kevin Ware. The Kevin Ware. Oh that's what I was God. gonna say. Like when that happened last year, I thought my brother was gonna barf all over himself. It's it was, so hard it, to watch. Oh, it's incredible. But 
I, I couldn't. It was, you know, one of those train wrecks mm-hmm. you just can't look away. So I started Googling, like, worst sports injuries and, like, <laughs> all these, like, boxing knockouts and people's teeth going flying and this uh, chick got her ear, like, literally punched off. Yeah, that was yeah, insane. That happened that last was, week. That was really recent, yeah. A week ago, it was crazy. It was, uh, oh, I can't remember her name. but Literally, was, she got punched in the ear and just a spray of blood went well, everywhere. Well, she had cauliflower ear, which cauliflower ear is the thing that you get when you're wrestling. It's something you get from, like, wrestling headgear where the, your ear puffs up and it's, like, full of, like, fluids and nastiness or whatever. And if you get punched in it, it can rupture. And it's not all that dangerous. It'll spray. It'll spray a bunch of blood. But like, really, it's just a tiny kind of hole in the cauliflower ear. But she got hit there a bunch of times, and it, and instead of puncturing a hole, it cut it, and her ear was literally hanging oh, off. Well, yeah, you do. Your Will, are you gonna garbage. vomit? Like, <laughs> you did eat no, that crazy boner in pill. No. <laughs> in Taekwondo, we saw a dude get his ear ripped off in a grappling match. It was insane. Oh my god, it's so hard to watch. I have. I also have seen all of those videos, and every time it's like, "Why am I watching this?" Uh, there's another one of Anderson Silva breaking his leg when he kicks uh. a guy. Like he he kicks a guy with his shin, and his leg snaps in half at the shin. Like it's just. You guys, you guys like snuff films? No. <laughs> uh. I, I was literally just going to bring up the video of Bud Dwyer killing himself. Oh no! Who is that? I don't know what that is. You don't. Oh my God! I I did a bit about this very briefly. There's a video that I just saw just on YouTube because they don't give a shit uh, of a like disgraced politician from the like late 1980s, I believe, by the name of Bud Dwyer, uh, who like held a press conference, pulled a handgun out of a Manila envelope, and put it in his mouth, and like blew his brains against the back wall. Ugh, that's. A man uh, who was a disgraced politician who killed himself in order to maintain his uh, pension for his family and was later cleared of all charges. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh... Because if he'd, if he'd been ousted from office, then like he would have lost everything. Right. If he dies in office, right. he's golden. Yeah, so that's like sort of the twist ending in, at the end of Stephen King's The Mist. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they were dead the whole time. <laughs> no. uh, the whole time, they were the this guy is out running mist monsters like in I a love car, that movie. in a car, and he's got like his kids, and he pulls over right as the monsters are like overtaking his car, and he kills his kids to save them from being yeah. destroyed by these monsters, and like. Ten seconds later, the army rolls through in the opposite direction <laughs> and, like, saves the day. That's what makes Stephen King great, because, like, his books are more like what humans react to these situations like, and it's, like, it's nuts. That's nah, crazy. that was... Well, uh, that's the uh, note. Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> <laughs> the, but Bud Dwyer was oh, right. the subject... No, no, it's a very easy, it's a very quick one. He was the subject of uh, the the uh, beloved 90s song, uh, Hey Man, Nice Shot. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, by Filter. Yeah. Correct. And if you like that video, check out Two Men and a Hammer. Uh, I, don't, don't Google that, podcast land. <laughs> don't search it that. It won't show up on Google. It's on bestscore.com, Two Men and a Hammer. It's entertaining. <laughs> don't. No, don't plug that. I don't know what that is. Don't, uh, no Will, one knows. Will's what... pants are starting to get tight over here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, okay. buy, we're buying time. We got to wrap. We got to wrap it up. I'm gonna s- brace yourself, Serenity Doherty. Uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and listening to the Jimmy Curve. Thank you to our special guest, Dan thank Schmidt you. and Chris Dryden. We had an awesome had a blast. Thank you. Thank you for the oh, gifts. Yeah. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Jimmy Curve. Thank you. Good night.
On these borders, these stands of hearts that bleed the same color. 